Lucas here. And in today's video, I'm going to explore how neuroinflammation may play a role in the pathophysiology of ADHD. So for those of you who are brand new to my channel, my name is Lucas. I'm the founder of Ergogenic Health. And my mission is to give you guys such cutting edge health information that you'll struggle to find on Google. So today's video is all about ADHD. And specifically, I'm going to look at one of the leading causes of ADHD. And just keep in mind, guys, that this is not medical advice and I'm not dismissing the use of um, current medications and things like that. All I'm doing is presenting some research. Um, so let's get stuck into this article that I found. So this review uh, looks at the role of oxidative stress and neuroinflammation in ADHD. Um, so the pathophys around or of ADHD, so the cause is not very well um, understood. Although there's plenty of research pointing towards an imbalance between oxidants and antioxidants in the body when looking at ADHD. So of course the symptoms of ADHD do vary and it's obviously on a spectrum. Um, we know that some people respond really well to medications, others don't. Um, but what I wanna look at is specifically uh, the role of you know, poor antioxidant defense and specifically low glutathione status um, in those that suffer from ADHD. So the first randomized, uh, in one randomized double-blind placebo-controlled study was found that children with ADHD had decreased total antioxidant status. Keep in mind, guys, the body's master antioxidant is glutathione followed by superoxide dismutase, which is important for everyone, regardless of if you have ADHD or not. Um, but that's one uh, basic illustration of how... Um, antioxidant status is hindered and compromised in those that suffer from ADHD. So boosting glutathione status may help with some of the symptoms of ADHD, although this is obviously not medical advice. Uh, what we can see is that there's a higher concentration of adrenaline and noradrenaline levels in patients that have ADHD, which sort of makes sense. And I've covered adrenaline and noradrenaline levels um, in other videos and that makes sense because these are crucial neurohormones that regulate arousal. And generally speaking, ADHD can be either super under aroused, which is the inattentive or over aroused and suffer from like scattered thoughts and things like that. So um, that was very fascinating. And then I also took a little snapshot down here. You'll be able to see the, the role of neuroinflammation. Um, so what's interesting is that it's been suggested that the release of inflammatory cytokines caused by stress or allergic inflammation, think about, think about if there's a relationship between histamine, asthma, and ADHD, and also whether you people that suffer from ADHD have um, extra allergic or increased allergic um, also they found that serum levels of interleukin-6 were significantly higher in children with ADHD so what is causing the elevation in interleukin-6 what is actually causing the an increase in inflammatory cytokines is it the environment is it heavy metals is it uh, nutrient deficiencies is it toxicity is it mold <clears throat> there are so many factors that can be leading or well, triggering an increase in interleukin-6 and inflammatory cytokines. Um, and then they also noted that uh, recently in plasma from young people with ADHD, there were higher levels of C-reactive protein and lower levels of TNF-alpha and BDNF. Now, BDNF is one of the crucial growth factors that I've co I cover that in my nootropics course, which you'll see a link to in the video description. Um, that's, cru that's crucial for memory, learning, mood, and things like that. So 
that was pretty much it. I wanted to really highlight, obviously I could do multiple videos on ADHD and explore other parameters and factors. Um, but this is one key point is that neuroinflammation plays a crucial role in the development of ADHD. So guys, thank you for tuning in and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.